Hello, my friends. Welcome to jamtruth.com. My name is Joshua Michael, and I'd like to welcome you to my science series. This is Physics 102, Science versus Pseudoscience. What are the true sciences? Well, this should be interesting. Hey, don't shoot the messenger. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to separate the real sciences from the not-so-real sciences. For something to be considered a science, it must be testable by the scientific method, as I have demonstrated in the previous Class 101. That is to say, it must have at least one independent variable that can be tested. Also, just because you use complicated mathematical theorems doesn't make something scientific. Alex B. Berizzo and Tom Hartsfield wrote in the article in 2012 titled what separates science from non-science, they state, they state, and I quote, even using extremely complicated math and statistics doesn't make a field scientific. Okay, and that's from realclearscience.com. So let's go back over real quick, what is science? Science is the knowledge and study of the natural world based on facts learned through experiment and observation. A particular area of scientific study, such as biology, physics, chemistry, biochemistry. A particular branch of science. Again, that's from the merriamwebster.com. So, if we're going to talk about science, let's talk about what is pseudoscience. Okay? Pseudoscience is any of various methods, theories, or systems, as astrology, psychokinesis, or clairvoyance, considered as having no scientific basis because there's really no way to test some of these things and we'll get really into that as we get further in, into this video. Okay, so here we go. So, paleontology, anthropology, archeology, span geology, evolutionary biology, evolutionary biology, really? And then we also have theoretical physics, non-experimental. Folks, non-experimental, doesn't that defy the whole purpose? Didn't we just establish that science, you had to be able to run experiments? Let me check. Yep, that's the definition of science. Okay, so then there's also astrophysics, astrology, and cosmology. Folks, these nine topics are not, 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 I say again, they are not sciences. They cannot perform experiments, okay? The first six candidates can't even get through the, the first step of the scientific method, which is the whole basis of science. They cannot observe a phenomenon without a time machine. The last three postulants, astrophysics, astrology, and cosmology, can't formulate a scientific hypothesis because they lack an independent variable. Ergo, they can't isolate, test, then validate their independent variables, predictions, which is step three, four, and five of the scientific method, full stop. So that would actually mean that things that we're teaching in high school and college are not sciences. They're, they may be philosophies, they may be religious studies, but they're not sciences, okay? The true sciences, like physics, also known as quantum mechanics, chemistry, biology, biochemistry. Then there are the technical sciences, like engineering, computers, environmental sciences. These are all real sciences, as all can be tested because they all have what we like to call independent variables, a means by which you can test. You are going to hear me use this term a lot, folks, independent variable. Like it, love it, learn it, okay? Physics, now also known as quantum mechanics, most people don't even have a clue what that term means. But for the layman who stumbles into it, they are immediately confronted with numerous obstacles such as background noise, magical mathematical theorems, snake oil prognications, etc, etc, etc. Okay? Even if you go to a formal institution, 99.99% .99 of your undergraduate and even your graduate level studies will fall into this next category. Shut up and calculate. Richard Feynman actually coined this term. Okay? In short, the mathematical formula formalization of quantum theory provides no explanation. I've said this now over and over and over again, folks. Mathematics does not explain anything. 
It can only describe the what, but it cannot give you the how or the why. Nicholas Gissen from the University of Geneva said, it only provides a way of doing calculations. Some physicists conclude, concluded that there is nothing to explain. Shut up and calculate, they would advise us, says Nicholas Gissen from the University of Geneva. Wait, what? This is physics, right? We need explanations, not descriptions. We need diagrams and illustrations. There's actually a method to the madness though, folks, to just make people calculate. Since a majority of scientists, which most professing to be are not, the majority of scientists have a prior adherence to their fairy tale religion, philosophical neutralism, realism, also known as atheism, which is scientifically falsified by the way, but we'll get to that. The irrefutable experimental evidence in the literal thousands without exception of quantum mechanics or physics, which is the most successful branch of science in the history of science and stands in direct contradiction to it. Atheism that is. That puts all pseudoscientists and atheists in a very uncomfortable position. Vice-like I'd actually say. So you pseudoscientists can either reckon with the scientific evidence to which there are masses and masses of it and switch your worldview accordingly or close your eyes, put your fingers under your arms, put your head in the sand and go la 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 shut up and calculate over and over again and let cognitive dissonance flood over your entire intellectual faculties. Then the scientists begin to erect barriers, beginning to label it as quantum weirdness. Spooky, strange, absurd, paradoxical and even bizarre. These terms are actually in the literature, folks, and would denote, in, a, in reality, a fringe science, which is exactly opposite of what physics actually is. But when you have accepted these, but when you have accepted things in the scientific community that make no sense whatsoever and can't be verified, then science fiction becomes non-fiction, which is what we have today. For example, the second law of thermodynamics, folks. How can you have the expanse of space and a vacuum next to a positive pressure system. Don't answer that question. We'll get to it in another video. But I just wanted to give you kind of an example. Only if you were a philosophical neutralist, realist, or atheist, could you label physics as anything like weirdness, spookiness, strangeness, absurd, paradoxical, or even bizarre. But of course, they even conjure up and spout off mind-numbing interpretations there is no interpretation in science, folks. It's either black or white. It's like binary code. It's either one or zero. It either is or isn't. So they come up with these rescue hypotheses to lead people further from the truth. Wow, what is this, religion? Okay, so they conjure up things like many worlds or multiverses that can never be confirmed or falsified, by the way. Show me a many world. Show me multiverses. These are just get out of jail free cards so they can close their mind and cling to their man-made lies and falsified facade of their sciences, which are merely clumsily contrived unnatural stories, by the way. That way, they can confuse people instead of having to give a logical account for their outrageous scientifically falsified stances. The bottom line is pseudoscientists are busted and they know it. Richard Feynman, a Nobel Prize winner in physics has pointed out that every statement of quantum mechanics is a restatement of Heinenberg's uncertainty principle. Werner Berg, pioneer of quantum mechanics, Nobel Prize winner in physics, the first says, and I quote, the first gulp from the glass of natural science will turn you into an atheist. But at the bottom of the glass, the creator is waiting for you. I've said this before. Through physics, through real science, I can prove there is a creator. Now, who he is, what he is, we, you know, that, that is up for another, a whole nother discussion, okay? But I can prove that one exists, okay? I think it's interesting that Heidenberg said that because I would agree. I think that once you strip away the pseudosciences and the false religion dogma, you can actually prove the existence of a creator. No, I'm not gonna go into that in this video. 
But I will go so far as to say, I hypothesize the reason they developed all these pseudosciences was to potentially hide the creator's existence from you. Why they might have done such a thing, we can discuss in another video or in my philosophy series, okay? Okay, so let's recap. Paleontology, anthropology, archeology, span geology, evolutionary biology, theoretical physics, non-experimental, astrophysics, astrology, cosmology. Folks, these are not sciences as they are not, as they cannot be put through the scientific method. They are actually either philosophies or religions. Okay, full stop. The real sciences, physics, also known as quantum mechanics, bio, biology, chemistry, biochemistry, and the technical sciences of engineering, computers, and environmental sciences. These are sciences. Remember that a science must have what element to be considered a science? One, an independent variable. Two, an independent variable. Three, an independent variable. Four, none of the above. If you answered four, none of the above, get out of my class. Just kidding, folks. All right. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed uh, my science series. This is Physics 102, Science versus Pseudoscience. I hope you've gotten something from this class. If you've enjoyed the class, please feel free to like and share it with others all over social media. You can also support us on Patreon, Facebook, and Twitter, or join our family at jmtruth.com. Till next time, my friends, we'll see you next time.